definitely one of the center points of how we design these systems. And then sort of Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India Live, India's Voice to the World. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh, coming up in the next 30 minutes. Over 140 people killed, many more injured in one of the deadliest terror attacks at a concert hall in Moscow. 11 alleged suspects detained. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres visits Egypt's border with Gaza to reiterate his call for a humanitarian ceasefire in Israel Hamas conflict. Prime Minister Narendra Modi returns to Delhi after successful visit to Bhutan. Earlier inaugurated a state of the art hospital built with India's assistance in Thimpu. Hospital a shining example of India Bhutan partnership. In one of the deadliest terror attacks in Moscow, over 140 people were killed, and many more injured after a gunman opened fire at a concert hall. The fire started with huge plumes of black smoke rising over the building, which could hold several thousand people, and a hosted top international artist. Russian authorities now focus on providing help to people. Meanwhile, 11 people suspected of carrying out the attack have been detained, even a search for others who are believed to be at large. Continue. The governor of the Moscow region, Andrei Vorobeyov, described the Friday's concert hall attack as a tragedy. He says that an operational headquarters has been set up. This is a tragedy. The burning area is very obvious. Firefighters are working hard on site. Further information will be released once the firefighters conclude their work. Investigators found weapons and other evidence after camouflage-clad gunmen opened fire at a concert hall near Moscow on Friday. The Russian investigative committee released footage of a rifle lying on the ground and staff examining spare gun magazines, spent bullet casings at about 6,200-seat Krakus City Hall near Moscow, where the attack occurred. Meanwhile, world leaders have expressed shock, extended condolences to victims of the shooting near Moscow and Russia. Condemning the attack, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said India stands in solidarity with the government and people of Russia. UN chief uh, leaders from EU, Turkey and other world leaders also extended messages of solidarity with people of Russia in this hour of grief. An attack near Moscow... At concert goers on Friday brought back memories of the 2004 Beslan school siege. The five gunmen dressed in camouflage on Friday opened fire with automatic weapons at people attending a concert in the Krokus City Hall near Moscow. The Kremlin said Russian President Vladimir Putin was updated on the concert attack by the FSB director. Putin wished a speedy recovery to those injured in the attack. Soon global condemnation and messages of solidarity poured in. The UN chief, United States, European Union and India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, among others, condemned the attack and sent their condolences. The images are just horrible um, and uh, just hard to watch. And our thoughts, obviously, are going to be with the, the victims of this terrible, terrible shooting attack. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in a social media post on X, said, We strongly condemn the heinous terrorist attack in Moscow. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims. India stands in solidarity with the government and the people of the Russian Federation in this hour of grief. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the attack in the strongest possible terms. According to a statement attributable to the Deputy Spokesperson Farhan Haq, the Secretary General conveys his deep condolences to the bereaved families and the people and the government of the Russian Federation. He wishes those injured a speedy recovery. European Union spokesman Peter Santo in a statement posted on X said, 
that the EU is shocked and appalled by the reports of a terrorist attack in the Crocus City Hall in Moscow. The EU condemns any attacks against civilians. Our thoughts are with those Russian citizens affected. Condemning the attack, French President Emmanuel Macron said in the statement that France stands in solidarity with the victims of the shooting. While the German Foreign Office said that the images of the terrible attack on innocent people in Crocus City Hall near Moscow are horrific. The background must be investigated quickly. Our deepest condolences with the families of the victims. Following the attack, all entertainment and mass events were cancelled in Russia. A billboard near the concert hall read a message, We grieve. Following the attack, firefighters had to battle a massive blaze as flames leapt into the sky and plumes of black smoke rose above the venue. The emergency services evacuated hundreds of people while parts of the venue's roof collapsed. Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. Fuzel Ahmed reporting for DD India. Moving on to updates from the Russia-Ukraine conflict. A person was killed, two others wounded in a Ukrainian drone attack on Russia's Belgorod region. The drone attack damaged four buildings along with several vehicles. The Ukrainian forces also shot down 31 of the 34 attack drones launched overnight by Russia over parts of central, southern and southeastern Ukraine. On to another conflict. Israel has said its forces fighting in Gaza have killed more than 170 terrorists during their days-long raid at the Al-Shifa hospital. The Israeli military earlier said hospital was being used by Hamas to command terror operations against Israel. It also added that more than 350 Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants have so far been detained at the hospital. Meanwhile, eight parcels were airdropped over Gaza, delivering aid and relief materials. Israel's military has said that it had opened a new entry point for aid to enter Gaza and was allowing unlimited supplies into the enclave. For now, countries such as the United States have sought to use airdrops and ships to deliver relief materials. And this is as United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres arrived in Egypt border with Gaza on Saturday to renew plea for a ceasefire. Guterres will visit Al-Arish in Egypt's northern Sinai, where much of the international relief for Gaza is delivered and stockpiled. He's also expected to visit a hospital in Al-Arish, meet UN humanitarian workers in Rafah. His trip comes as Israel prepares to launch a major military operation in the southern Gaza city of Rafa. The UN Security Council vote on a new draft resolution that seeks an immediate ceasefire in Gaza has now been postponed for Monday. The vote will come after United States put forward a text on the need for a ceasefire that was vetoed by Russia and China and opposed by Arab states on Friday. The draft resolution demands an immediate ceasefire for the ongoing Muslim holy month of Ramadan that leads to a permanent sustainable ceasefire respected by all sides. It also demands both immediate and unconditional release of hostages seized in the October 7th attack by Hamas and humanitarian access in Gaza. The US says its forces conducted self-defense strikes against three Houthi underground weapon storage facilities in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen on Friday. In a statement posted on X, U.S. Central Command said the strikes targeted capabilities used by Houthis to threaten and attack naval and merchant vessels in the region. The forces also destroyed four unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, launched by Houthi in self-defense. On to some other stories. Slovaks began voting in a presidential election on Saturday, where polls are open in the first round of voting from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. A runoff between top two candidates could also be due on April 6th if no one wins a majority in this one. Venezuela's opposition leader Maria Corina Machado has named Corina Joris as her successor to take on President Nicolas Maduro in the country's presidential elections in July this year. 
The naming of Yoris as the opposition's candidate comes after Venezuela's Attorney General announced the detention of two of Mercado's closest allies earlier this week. She also said that arrest warrants have been issued for seven other people. In the U.S., more states are holding primary elections this weekend, including Louisiana and Missouri. Presumptive Republican candidate Donald Trump and Democrat current president Joe Biden don't have serious challenges left. But these elections are a chance to see how strongly voters in those states support them. DD India correspondent Caroline Malone gets us more. Louisiana is a strongly Republican and Donald Trump supporting state. Their governor, Jeff Landry, is among them. Well, Trump won the state in the last presidential election in 2016 and 2020 with 58% of votes. He's likely to clinch Saturday's primary for the Republican Party with ease. Well, for the Democratic primary, there are options other than the current president, Joe Biden, which means they may take some votes away from him, including Marianne Williamson. Well, there are nearly 3 million registered voters in Louisiana, with just over a third of those turning up to vote in previous elections. Voting is open until 8 p.m. local time, with results due shortly afterwards. Well, on Saturday, there was also a Democratic primary in Missouri. Republicans already held their caucus there and chose Trump. For Democrats, there's also an uncommitted option on the ballot, so rather than choosing Biden as a sort of protest vote against his policy on Israel and concern over the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. And any kind of vote in that direction could signal how big a problem it continues to be for his campaign. Results there are due early next week. Well, there are now 149 days left until the Democratic National Convention, when Biden is likely to be officially nominated as their candidate, and 114 days until the Republicans hold theirs in Milwaukee. Caroline Malone in Washington for DD India. Meanwhile, U.S. lawmakers passed on Saturday a $1.2 trillion spending package to avoid a government shutdown. The budget bill will keep the government funded for the next six months until the end of the fiscal year. The vote on passage was 74 to 24. U.S. Congress sent it to President Joe Biden to sign into law and avert a partial shutdown. Tonight, we have funded the government with significant investments for parents and kids and small businesses and health care workers, military families and so much more. It's no small feat to get a package like this done in divided government. These past few months have shown yet again that when bipartisan has room to work, we can get the job done. Let's turn to updates on the Haiti crisis. As gang violence spreads across the North American nation, almost half of Haiti's people are struggling to feed themselves with several areas close to famine. According to international organizations, inflation and poor harvest have also helped push Haiti to its worst levels of food insecurity on record. The Integrated Food Security Face Classification, an organization which sets a scale used by United Nations and governments to assess hunger, said in a report that about 4.97 million people out of a population of over 11 million were facing crisis or worse levels of food insecurity. Eight areas were now assessed to be in an emergency phase, the first level before famine. Britain's Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, has announced she's been diagnosed with cancer. It follows weeks of speculation about her health after abdominal surgery earlier in the year. On Friday, Kate said she was undergoing preventive chemotherapy after tests taken uh, that she had major abdominal surgery in January revealed that cancer had been present. I underwent major abdominal surgery in London and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. The news of cancer to Britain's Princess of Wales, Kate dominated the front page of Britain's newspapers on Saturday. A number of UK's tabloids, broadsheets devoted entire front pages to the revelation. Rumours and gossip on social media, newspapers, even some US talk shows have abounded since Kate underwent abdominal surgery in January. She had taken a leave of absence from royal engagements while she recovered from the surgery. 
Meanwhile, messages of support poured in from world leaders on social media after Kate's cancer diagnosis. U.S. President Joe Biden posted on X that he joins millions around the world in praying for her recovery. Time for a short break. Still to come on this edition of DT India Live. India's External Affairs Minister on a visit to three ASEAN countries. Indian naval ship Kolkata, deployed for anti-piracy operations, arrives in Mumbai with 35 Somali pirates on board. An Indian community in Colombo celebrates colourful festival of Holi. Real crackdown on corruption that the voters, the citizens of the country, have been wanting and fighting for for decades or as the opposition claimed an effort to cripple the opposition timing depends on the detection of the corruption then the timelines are fixed by the law i will say the opposition has crippled itself in the manner in which they chose the timeline of response for all these notices that were coming to them in ed when you are arrested you are guilty until proven innocent now the thin condition is the court cannot give you bail until you are innocent. But how will the court be innocent? Because you don't go to the facts of the matter in the bail hearing. Welcome back. You're watching DD India Live. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Delhi on Saturday after successfully concluding the state visit to Bhutan. Ending the special visit with yet another special gesture, the King of Bhutan, Jigme Kaiser Namgyal Wangchuk and Prime Minister Shering Topke both came to see off Prime Minister Modi at the airport. Earlier on Saturday, India's Prime Minister, along with his Bhutanese counterpart, Shering Topke, inaugurated the Gyalsun Jetsun Pema Mother and Child Hospital in Thimpu. It is a state-of-the-art hospital built with India's assistance, the newly constructed hospital would add value to the quality of mother and child health services in Bhutan. The facility stands as a shining example of India-Bhutan partnership in health sector. On a two-day visit to Himalayan Kingdom, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced further support of 10,000 crore rupees or about 1.25 billion US dollars to the neighboring country's 13th development plan. Prime Minister of Bhutan, Shering Topge, extended gratitude to India's Prime Minister for the 10,000 crore rupees assistance to the Himalayan nation. Honored to receive Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji on a two day state visit to Bhutan. The two day state visit couldn't have gone any better. He was welcomed with open hearts by every citizen of Bhutan. And uh, this visit, this historic visit, is going to further strengthen the already strong relations between our two countries and our two people. Bhutanese Prime Minister Shering Topke thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for visiting Bhutan in a social media post. And I quote, he says, a big thank you to my brother PM Narendra Modi ji for visiting us Neither his busy schedule nor inclement weather could prevent him from fulfilling his promise to visit us. This must be the Modi's guarantee phenomena. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar, who is on a three nations visit, began his Singapore visit by paying homage to Netaji and the brave Indian National Army soldiers. Dr. Jay Shankar on an official visit to Malaysia, Singapore, and the Philippines from March 23rd to 27th at the invitation of his counterparts. Three-nation visit of S.J. Shankar will focus on enhancing bilateral relations and would provide an opportunity for engagement on regional issues of mutual concern. And delivering his lecture titled on Why Bharat Matters in Singapore, India's External Affairs Minister articulated that India had demonstrated a robust foreign policy approach amidst the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. Once we started responding, other aspects of globalization were also visible. And that too told us why foreign policy mattered, uh, which was the producing vaccines itself. 
we were in a way at the end of a complex global supply chain. And every part of that chain, which was really spread across multiple countries, had to work if vaccines were to be delivered. And one of my most uh, memorable, I mean, I would say actually honestly stressful uh, uh, memories of that period were going uh, to the US uh, in, in uh, 2021 uh, with a binder this thick about all the orders that had been placed uh, across the world, but in one way or the other, which went through the US. And, you know, until those were cleared, really the global supply chain for vaccine production wouldn't work. Minister Jayshankar said the current conflicts in Ukraine and the Red Sea have affected the supply chain, impacting India's energy requirements. Now, there was a time when conflicts could happen. It could happen somewhere else, and we are in a different part of the world, and, you know, its impact on us. Yes, we read about it in the newspaper, we saw it on the television, and probably it stopped there. It may have had some consequences, maybe, on the markets. But if one looks today, uh, whether it is the conflict in Ukraine or what is today happening in the Red Sea, we are seeing, actually, uh, what is an actual or potential or an averted major disruption uh, of our daily routine and actually of our way of living. Uh, in our case, I mean, uh, as, as a major energy importer, uh, when the Ukraine conflict started, I would, we saw the price of energy, price of oil virtually double in that period. Even when it settled down finally, uh, it was about 50% higher than what it was before the conflict started. And Minister Jay Shankar had a productive interaction with leading Singaporean corporate figures. He appreciated their positive feedback on India's growth story based on investment experiences. He exuded confidence in their commitment to doing more business in India that will further increase. Indian Navy has carried out sustained operations in the Gulf of Aden and Red Sea and off the coast of Somalia for the past 100 days. Today, INS Kolkata got back 35 Somali pirates apprehended in a daring anti-piracy operation on 16th of March. DD India's Nandita Dagar gets us more. Firm actions by the Indian Navy resulted in surrender of the pirate ship on 16th of this month in an operation lasting over 40 hours that commenced in the early hours of 15 March, INS Kolkata intercepted pirate ship in the Arabian Sea. INS Kolkata, with the 35 apprehended pirates, returned to Mumbai on Saturday and handed over the pirates to the local police for further legal action in accordance with Indian laws. About 10 ships are present in this entire region uh, to counter all these, uh, to take part in all these three uh, tasks, anti-piracy, anti-hijacking, anti-missile and anti-drone. So, right from the uh, Red Sea to the Gulf of Aden to uh, the North Arabian Sea and to the uh, east coast of Somalia. So, this is the area that we are operating uh, where we have deployed these ships. So, the uh, task is to ensure that uh, we uh, ensure that there is safety, uh, security and stability so that uh, merchant vessels which, uh, uh, which are carrying our essential requirements, be it crude oil, be it products being taken back from here or fertilizers, all that, you know, reach our shores safely. India has been operating 10 ships in the Arabian Sea, Gulf of Aden and Red Sea to protect merchant ships from drone and missile attacks from Houthis and pirate attacks off the coast of Somalia. The uh, insurance rates have gone up, Abhi it has gone up by almost 35 to 40 percent. Uh, the container costs have gone up from $500, it has gone up to close to 2000 or 2000 dollars plus uh, more, uh, it was uh, shown in the briefing also that uh, almost 40 to 50 percent of the ships have uh, the companies have started rerouting their ships around the cape of good hope now isse kya hoga your the uh, uh, 
uh, freight charges will go up, the insurance charges will go up, and, and where is the effect going to be felt? The effect is going to be felt by you and me, people like us, as consumers. The Navy chief has said that the Operation Sankalp will continue to protect seafarers and the Indian crew from pirates and drone attacks. Nandita Dagar for DD India. Let's now get you the latest on what's happening in India in the run-up to the world's largest democratic elections in the country. Six former Congress MLAs of Himachal Pradesh who were disqualified as legislators joined the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP in New Delhi on Saturday. Four-time MLA Sudhir Sharma, three-time MLA Ravi Thakur, Indardat Lakhanpal, first-time MLA Devendra Putto, Rajendra Rana and first-time MLA Chaitanya Sharma joined the BJP in the presence of Himachal Pradesh BJP President and Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakur. Addressing the press conference, Union Minister welcomed all the MLAs. The colourful festival of Holi was celebrated by the Indian Cultural Association in collaboration with Swami Vivekananda Cultural Centre in Sri Lanka's Colombo. The event saw enthusiastic participation of several hundred members of the Indian diaspora and local Sri Lankan residents. That's all for this edition of DD India Live. Let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India Live. Namaskar.